Hi, my name is Tomasz Poszetek, um, and I just wanted to say I'm sorry that I haven't been recording anything in weeks, but as you already recognize, or as you already know, I'm always trying to cover things that I find challenging or that uh, I find very interesting, and in the recent time, I didn't have time as well, therefore there has been no content, but uh, I somehow want to get back to um, recording these videos. And I want to start with the new recording around bookings, Microsoft bookings, that recently was engaged into, um, into automating. And this is the thing that I find interesting. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll make you a very brief intro to what bookings is and how you can automate it using Power Automate. All right. So let's get to it. Now, before I continue, I just wanted to um, a little describe you what Bookings is. So, like anyone who uh, owns Office 365 Outlook uh, in their organization, they are able to as well benefit from the Bookings as an application. And this is basically a solution that allows you to create um, like a public-facing um, landing page uh, where any of your customers or any of your internal employees um, that depends on how you configure bookings is able to schedule um, a service. It can be a meeting, consultancy, you know, support, um, training or whatever with um, one or more of your selected staff members. So like each booking or each scheduled um, service can be scheduled with one or more employees. And um, what is the most beneficial is that um, Bookings as well synchronizes or integrates with these staff members' personal calendars. I mean, not personal, but those those business calendars that they have um, within the organization. So as an employee or as a customer navigates to that public-facing site and they want to schedule anything with the selected staff member, they will only get their availabilities for, you know, these hours, these days, when those uh, selected staff members have nothing planned. And so the bookings has its like a backend where you can just see all your staff members and their um, and their um, scheduled meetings or other services, as well as they're like, you can see personal uh, assignments. Um, there is information about the booking page, like uh, what, you know, you can configure it, how it does look like, where the colors, um, um, and so some, some other um, entry information. And then there is like a small CRM where you can find your customers. So people who have, who has ever booked anything with you through the bookings um, instance. And then there is staff members. So you can have different staff members. Okay. I have different roles. Uh, for each of them, you can just review their available, uh, sorry, availability. And as well, um, you can, you can assign them one or more services. That you that you want to um, allow your customers to schedule through the bookings uh, page, and well, finally there are services, and then services is a couple uh, is a cool thing because um, it allows you you know to configure the the price rate, for example, now uh, how long every such service takes. Um, when is it available? Um, you know, some descriptions, some, some details, information. And also, you're able to uh, create multiple custom fields and as well require customers to, to fill in or not uh, customer information. And then speaking about the custom fields, you're able to choose between text and drop down questions. And then you're as well able to get these um, custom questions, answers, um, in your, uh, well, for, for example, Power Automate to, um, well, to, to move this information somewhere else. So this is services. And then finally, what is, what is cool is that you're able to connect these bookings to Power Automate. And that's the part I will talk about in a moment. The last thing I wanted to show you around bookings is that, um, you know, landing page, if you haven't seen it yet, so this is where your customers or your internal employees, again, depending on how you configure bookings, are able to first select the service. So what they want to schedule you, uh, what, what they want to schedule, um, with or schedule with you. <laughs> Sorry. 
Um, and after they select the specific, um, the specific service, then they are able to, to, you know, pick one of the staff members. You can as well configure, um, this service that it can, uh, that it allows to select more than a single staff member. Um, and as mentioned, you are able as well to, uh, I mean, the, the bookings itself, it will only show these hours. And uh, in between, you know, this time span, uh, when that specific staff member is really free, so like when they do have nothing else in their calendar scheduled. And after you select it, uh, or after the customer selected, you know, a service staff member hour, um, then they are able as well to uh, provide additional details. And then as you saw, it depends whether this information is required to be provided or if it is optional. Um, so that is, that is, um, as well up to you. So this is how the bookings look like from the, uh, from the customer's perspective and ours as administrators. What I dislike is that because the, you know, the assumption for this service is that um, because it gets information about stuff availability, then it is not really like necessary to ask stuff double time or the second time if they are actually available at that hour. And so after a customer schedules a meeting through the bookings, they will immediately get a notification that their scheduled meeting is approved or is confirmed, which not always is correct. And this is what I'm missing here because you're not able to, um, you know, configure bookings anyway that all these scheduled uh, services have to be approved prior to be confirmed. So there is like nothing similar to that. Also, you're not able to anyhow modify and manipulate um, the contents of the email, the confirmation email that is being sent to the customer. And these two things together makes booking slightly not intuitive or maybe confusing for the customer because you are, what I will show you in a moment, able to um, to create like a process behind which actually requires the approval and then depending whether the approval is granted or not it uh, cancels the um, the meeting or it keeps it so in other words if the staff member who is selected says no sorry like i'm not available um, to to make that scheduled um, service or to provide that scheduled service in that scheduled time then you can make Power Automate to cancel it automatically. Although, from the customer's perspective, this is confusing because they were sent an email with confirmation um, that their appointment, their service has been scheduled. And like whatever hour, two hours later, they will get a second notification that sorry, it has been canceled. So this is what I dislike because this first initial email, it uh, tells nothing about the fact that is like a pre-approved or pre-scheduled and that it still requires um, a staff member uh, approval or confirmation before it's really confirmed. But um, yeah, so this is what we have. Still, when thinking about a really simple yet very comprehensive, I think, and very complete solution for automatic bookings of services, uh, between our customers and our staff members, that's a very, very good solution. All right. So, okay. So let's see now that in action. So first I'll place a new, let's say, um, training request and I want to select a researcher, uh, to perform that training. Now, as you remember, uh, I then need to, you know, select time and date. And then to provide my details, and uh, as you remember, you are able to either mark these fields as required or not required, and as well you can create this additional information. This additional information it can be uh, created like a per a service. So speaking about the training, I could have a field where I'm asking what kind of training someone would like, whether like PL100, PL200, or maybe hyper automation in a day. This is up to me. So um, I'll fill in this information now, my email, so that I'll get all this, all this notification, some test address, some phone number, test, 
I'll say that I want uh, my own technology to be Power Automate and where did you find me? Well, let's say YouTube. So when I hit book, um, this request is going to be placed and I, as the customer, will get two emails. First one with the confirmation they placed, um, with a, with a scheduled, uh, meeting, with a scheduled service. And second with the calendar invitation and as well link to, um, navigate to this page, actually, uh, to be then able to either reschedule it or to cancel it. So this is what I will get in just a moment. And in the same time, there is this first flow being triggered, which is created uh, using, which is triggered using them when a new, um, when a new booking is placed. Now I will switch to use the, uh, I will switch to use the um, old, the classic designer because I just find it slightly more stable and it works just faster for me. Uh, therefore I will stick to it as long as the new designer is, is not very speed, very fast. So I got already these two emails, as I've mentioned. So the first one is, as I told you, the confirmation of the booking uh, that it has been placed. And the second one uh, is like the confirmation it has been approved uh, together with the booking details um, with this button to reschedule and as well the button to join the appointment once it is the time. And the workflow that was triggered works this way that first is being triggered uh, by the new appointment creation um, event and you have to be a bookings admin for this specific instance to be able to use that book to use that trigger um, and it returns you directly self-service appointment id and some other details however um, as you click and uh, look for any other actions from the booking set of actions you'll notice that the only one is this that allows you to list all those booking pages where um, you're an admin. And there is like nothing else, like you can't really get details of the booking, you can't cancel it, you can't, uh, you know, change it, you can't get its details. Uh, nope, all these things are not here. However, what you can do is you can use the Graph API um, endpoints to manipulate, to work with the booking, with the place bookings. And you can either use your delegated account or you can use your application account. I've chosen to use application account. So I've, I've created like a bookings management app and I've granted it all the permissions that are present. So first the bookings appointment read write. This is the minimum it has to have. And then there is bookings read all, um, which is, I think, even more than needed because it gives you an access to all the placed bookings. Anyhow, this is how I've done it. So then I'm getting the appointment details and for some reasons, this endpoint where I'm able to provide the ID of an appointment, it doesn't work for me. Uh, also, it doesn't work using the uh, all data filter. So even though this self-service appointment ID is there, um, when I was testing this, um, when I was testing it, um, this endpoint was actually <laughs> not really uh, not really listening to all these all data filters I was providing. So because I wasn't really able to get and extract just the details of the appointment that was just created, what I'm using is I'm getting all the appointments which are created actually. And then I'm using this filter um, action to just leave the one which has been created for this self-service um, uh, appointment ID. Now, if it does work for you, please let me know in comments below. Um, I'll be happy to update this, uh, this setup as of, as of testing of this, of these endpoints and, um, and flows. It just didn't work. So anyhow, I'm then getting or retrieving the ID of the appointment, which is slightly different to self-service appointment ID. Um, but I will need this to, um, to, to store for all those other requests that will be placed to Graph API. Um, and this ID is not really returned by the trigger action. Funny. Next, I'm getting all the answers to the technology area and the same for how did you find me? So like these two, um, select actions, they're just, uh, like retrieving the uh, object with information about um, the answers. And then I'm as well selecting just uh, uh, 
values which have been uh, selected. Next, uh, what Airflow is doing is saving all these details to SharePoint. You can obviously use, you know, your CRM, you can use Dataverse. It's up to you where you would like to store information behind the booking. Uh, I'm also, um, you know, saving the self-service appointment ID, which I need, and the appointment ID, which is useful and very crucial. And next, I'm creating the approval, which is being assigned to the person who has been selected uh, as a staff member. And lastly, I'm updating this um, uh, created item in SharePoint with the approval ID. Now, why do I need the task assigned, the assigned task ID? Well, obviously, because uh, there can be a situation where a customer has placed their booking and like a couple of minutes later, they decide to maybe reschedule it to a different time and date. Now, as I need, uh, in this situation, they will get like two tasks. First one for the newly created item and second task for the item that has been rescheduled. Now, let's assume a situation where they see the first task for the new item, for the new, ta for the new appointment, and they say, no, 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 I can't do this appointment in this, on this day, on that hour. So I'll cancel it. However, cancellation will cancel the appointment as a whole. So it doesn't matter that an appointment has been rescheduled, but we are canceling. And then um, a signee sees, well, there is a second task uh, for a different day, for a different hour, and that hour and day, it fits me. I can, I can approve it, I can say yes. But it doesn't matter they say yes in that point, because the meeting has already been canceled. So um, to prevent such a situation, to prevent a signee being assigned multiple tasks and then being confused which they should approve, which they should just ignore, and so on and so on, we need to store this approval ID so that if uh, if a meeting is rescheduled before it is approved or rejected, then we can cancel that existing task not to confuse the assignee. And so then the um, the process is waiting for the approval to be completed. If the approval times out at 30 days, then it cancels the appointment because, well, it hasn't been confirmed. Uh, and also it cancels the task itself, that assigned task. Well, why? Because we don't want the assignee to see that task. And the only thing that times out is the flow instance, not the task itself. So the task will still be hanging there on the assignee's, uh, you know, approvals list and it will be just confusing and will create a mess. So that we need to cancel it. Now, how to make a cancellation? You can find out in uh, my other video where I describe how to work with approval tasks in Power Automate in Microsoft Teams. Uh, and you can as well find the description below. I mean, you can find a link that, uh, to the video below in the description. Um, so just look for that. Next, um, if, if, if assignee uh, had said, uh, yes, I can make this appointment on that date uh, and time, then it goes to a second level of approval for the manager. And then manager is asked again to either approve or reject. If they say yes, then like nothing happens to the booking. It just stays as it is. If they say no, or if the, uh, if the timeout for their approval uh, is met, then the appointment is being canceled. Uh, and so it's just being deleted from the list of appointments. Uh, that the same thing happens if a signee says no. So if, if a signee for some reason uh, is unavailable for the given date and time, they can say, no, I don't want to make this appointment and this appointment is being canceled. So this is like a happy path and not happy path scenario. So right now, as I navigate to John Researcher's uh, list of, of um, approval tasks, he sees now that there is this new booking request that has been assigned to him and he say yes, no, I'll reassign this task to someone else. But now let's assume that uh, the customer, they have decided to actually reschedule this meeting from Tuesday, sorry, from Friday to, to Monday to 10 a.m., for example. And so they update the booking. Um, and the same as in the first scenario, right now there is going to be a different flow uh, triggered, which is called the rescheduled booking. And uh, it will handle this rescheduled um, situation. So let me just show you how it works. 
I think I already received emails uh, saying that, yep, this meeting has been updated. So this is the confirmation of the update in my meeting. And in just a moment, I will, yep, there it is. I will receive, or I have received um, um, the confirmation of the updated booking. So me as a customer, I was already notified that my booking has been updated and it is still confirmed. And on the other second, and, and on the other hand, um, there is this uh, situation that has to be handled as well by the cloud flow. So this flow is being triggered for the uh, appointment update and the beginning is pretty the same. Uh, the changes starts here. So first I'm checking if there is an existing record for this given trauma booking. If there is no, I'm creating it because I can assume that something has happened and that user has not actually uh, been assigned a task in the first place and there is no, there was no um, item created in the in, in SharePoint in the first place. So it has to be created. But if it has been created, then it is being updated to meet new date, new time, maybe new answers to questions, maybe new, uh, maybe different service. And also what is happening is that this existing task that has been assigned to the assignee is being canceled and a new one is being created. So right now, as John navigates to his list of approval tasks and he refreshes it, he notices that that new booking is gone, right? But right now, the only thing that he has is this booking request um, rescheduled information. So this is what has been assigned to him. And uh, like he would be able to say yes or no. Let's say we want to confirm it. Uh, with the outcome yes. So then um, the flow goes to uh, the second stage, which in this case is the same, the manager. And right now the manager is myself. So I'll go to my approvals. I'll go to my approvals and under my approvals, I see that there is this new task assigned to me that says that there is a new booking assigned to my subordinate. There is some kind of an uh, issue with uh, uh, with uh, details. I, I would need to I would need to fix it. Uh, but anyhow, I see information about uh, the days, the, the the times, and who is assigned the task. So I would say either yes or no. And let's, for the sake of these scenarios, say I will reject this meeting so uh, so that it should be cancelled. So as I expressed that I want to cancel it, you will notice that this flow has now completed successfully. Hopefully, <laughs> there is no 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 error. Yep. So it has um, completed successfully, and also. Uh, me as a customer, I have been sent another two emails with information that my booking has been cancelled. And as I've mentioned uh, to you, even though I am sending information about the reason why the meeting has been cancelled, unfortunately, this information is not being passed along with the cancellation email. So, um, that is that is uh, something that is uh, like a bug in the API in the endpoint, the Graph API endpoint for cancellation. So possibly, if you would like to, you know, keep a good relationship with your customer, you would need to send them a second email with the information why that meeting, why do I, why why the booking has been cancelled, apart from just cancelling the uh, the booking and uh, leaving them with this automated message. That is my, my, my advice. So let's navigate back and let's create a new booking. Uh, this time, let's say it's going to be this initial meeting. Uh, it will be John Researcher as well. Uh, it will be for 3 p.m. Uh, yep. And uh, let's say it's Copilot Studio and I found you through AKH Twitter and book. But right now we'll train a different scenario. So right now this is going to be the customer who wants to cancel the booking 
Um, well, because they've decided that they actually don't need it. So, um, right now, John should already be assigned a task that there is this new booking, yep, assigned to them, and that uh, they want to talk about the Copilot Studio. Um, but now customer decided, no, I actually don't need it. I, I will cancel it. Maybe it's too expensive. Who knows? So it has been canceled. And this is a third scenario. So this is this cancellation booking, which is now being triggered. And it's pretty simple. So this flow is being triggered using the third trigger from the bookings set of triggers. So when an appointment is canceled, it is then getting the existing booking in the SharePoint. Um, and if the booking is found, then it's updating the related item on SharePoint to the status canceled. And as well, it is canceling um, the task that is assigned to general research, re researcher because, well, obviously he is not required to, um, to express his will in terms of this approval. So um, that is it. And let's say the last thing, the last scenario, obviously, is a happy path, like a totally happy path. So let's say we want to schedule uh, the medical general researcher. and uh, well, whatever, the Power Apps, down the block, or maybe RPA, and book. And right now, John sees what is, again, going to be uh, assigned to him, like what is this um, meeting request sent to him. So, um, so this time he will say, yes, I would like to take part in this meeting, and I'm available and then everything is fine. So for this scenario, John says yes, and then confirm. And so as I switch to, um, to SharePoint, uh, yeah, it was experiments, and I think the site was bookings. I mean, the list was bookings. So right now, this initial meeting that has just been created, um, no, that's, that's going to be here, possibly. Yeah, general researcher test. Uh, I think I just, I should, I should, um, sort it using this, uh, some kind of modified. Let me just, let me just use the modified, uh, column and we'll sort it in your order. Yep. So that's it. Uh, it's under the RPA block pending. And so now the second approval, obviously, after John says yes, goes to goes to uh, manager. So then manager, uh, it's me in this case, sorry, it's not Plasti, uh, has to again express their approval. And manager says yes, obviously, it's all fine. So manager confirms. And this time, uh, the whole the whole flow is completed. And this meeting is going to be now marked as approved, right? So in this small CRM, all information is, uh, is uh, present with all the details. Uh, this time there is there is nothing being sent to uh, nothing being sent to the customer, despite the fact that this training, this initial training has been confirmed, right? So that's like the second, second uh, time it has been confirmed. Um, all right. And that is basically it. This is what I, that is basically what I wanted to show you. So with that, I would like to emphasize a couple of things. So first, uh, be sure to, if, if you'd like to actually use bookings as that, uh, you know, single place to create and manage a pro, uh, bookings, uh, then if you don't want to have this like fully like out of box without any approvals, then you need to create these three kind of, of, of flows, which are being triggered for three different events, which can occur for a single booking. So if it's created, if it's updated, if it's canceled. 
Um, and if you plan to create tasks, if you plan to create any kind of approval behind these bookings, then as well, be sure that uh, you are following my steps so that you don't really leave your uh, assignee, your employee, with tasks which are irrelevant to, uh, to you know, the, the booking scenario that is happening around them. Because it's not only that they might be confused, but they may accidentally cancel, uh, you know, an, uh, a booking which they would like actually to approve. So that is another thing. Mm, and uh, and apart from that, also remember that if you do a cancellation of a booking using Graph API endpoint, then unfortunately, what is described here mm, under the booking appointment cancel endpoint, so the cancellation message, it's not being sent. So uh, that is a downside. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. Maybe it will in later releases, but not as of today. Um, yep, and that's that's it. I hope you you'll find this video useful and that it will help you to uh, as well achieve your uh, you know goals around automation of bookings. If you have any questions, as always, just write them down below the video, like below the video in comments, and I will happy uh, to answer to all your concerns and support you. Once again, thank you very much and thank you. Subscribe, of course, subscribe. Bye-bye. <laughs>